even though we simplified this you do not have to do this you can just look at this right here and see what is the fastest growing term so what fastest growing term here is n squared here's one there's one and there's another so you only need to take one of the fastest growing one then uh, you take out the coefficient here there's the co uh, constant you take out the constant you end up with n squared so in the future when you look at the look at the code you probably don't even have to do any of these steps you can just look at it and figure out okay it's going to be n squared here I have a n here I have a n so inside here this is going to be n squared this is going to be executing n squared time because of that I can simply say okay my uh, time complexity is going to be n squared rather than using all of these steps to come up with the answer so this algorithm is something we went through in section 3.1 so it say describe the time complexity of the algorithm for finding the maximum element in a finite sequence so in section 3.1 we had this uh, bunch of uh, elements in the array and I want to find out what is the maximum among all of those elements so what I did was I set I set a variable called max equal the first element of the array since I set it to the first element of the array I started from I equal to not 1 I equal to to all the way up to n then with each iteration I had a if statement if maximum is less than ai then I'm going to update my variable max to this new ai uh, new element in the array so I'm checking with every current element is starting with the element 2 I'm checking is it greater than the max value if it is greater then assign that greater value back into max and keep going through your array until you reach the end so you go from 2 to n finally whatever the value is in your max element max variable is your answer so the number of comparisons will be used as the measure of the time complexity of the algorithm because comparisons are the basic operations used so even if we use this one um, this would have a time time of one eventually we're gonna get uh, get rid of it so no need to worry about this I'm just gonna concern with this for loop like all the comparisons that happen here there's a comparison there's a comparison so if I were to look at the comparisons happening in here in my for loop how many comparisons are happening Note it's, it's not n plus 1. It is not n plus 1 like uh, what you saw in the previous slide. Because we start with 2, not 1. If I were to go from 1 to n, then I would say n plus 1. But I'm starting with 2 because at the end I need to, I have extra comparison happening because of that. This is n. but inside the loop there will be n minus 1 iterations going on but here there will be n n comparison so here this would be n minus 1 comparison so now what I need to do is I need to add these comparisons together to measure the time complexity so n plus n minus 1 I can simplify this further I end up with 2 n minus 1 
what is my fastest growing term here which is n and I need to get rid of my coefficient coefficient is 2 so my answer is going to be n the time complexity of big theta n so if I were to draw this in a graph I would get a linear line like this so this is a linear function hence the time complexity of the algorithm is big theta of n but why am I saying this is big theta I'm not saying this is big O or big omega I'm just saying this is big theta why is that that's because we can show 2n minus 1 is big O of n also we can show 2n minus 1 is omega of n big omega of n so in section 3.2 we prove this if there was a question like that I showed you guys how can we say uh, prove that this is really big O of n or how can I say this is a big omega of n so for it to become a theta it has to satisfy both so big omega uh, a big O is like the upper bound of this function big omega is like the lower bound of the function right now my upper bound and the lower bound all are the same because of that since it said both of these satisfied I can say this is a theta big theta of n so this is the linear search alg algorithm which we went through in section 3.1 as well so describe the time complexity of the algorithm for linear search so we're gonna use the same procedure we just gonna look at the number of comparison used in this uh, pseudocode you could look at the other ones like this assignment operator but this will be just one and so on I mean you still get the same answer but in your book they like to just do the comparison just count the number of comparison used in uh, algorithm so that's what we're gonna do so we have three comparisons going on there's one comparison right here and here's another and there is another so we have three of them so how long will this one take this while loop this i less than or equal to n this will take n plus one time it's the same story as before when this while loop goes through it makes n iterations but at the end there will be a one extra one to check if this condition become true that's why I have n plus 1 just like before what about right here how many comparison will there be so there's only gonna be n comparison here that's because we have something called short circuit evaluation you might have learned this in your 1301 class whenever we have a and operator your computer performs something called a short circuit evaluation to save some processing time because you are using an AND operator for an AND operator to become a true this for this compound expression to become true both side has to need to have a one true and a true so if if the this left hand side become a false there's no need to check for this right hand side because of that it's not gonna even check this right hand side whenever this become false at the very end of the while loop so that's what we talk uh, but that's what we say short circuit evaluation which, which you should have learned in your 1301 class so because of that 
this will be only compared n times. So what about this one? This is outside the while loop, this if statement. Since this if else statement is outside the while loop, this is only going to get executed one time. So let's add these up. So n plus 1, then plus n plus 1. So you can simplify it further, but without simplifying it further, you can see the time complexity is going to be n. So if you simplify it further, you get 2n plus 2. And you, you, you need to find the fastest growing term here, which is 2n. And you take out the coefficient, you left with n. Because of that, the time complexity of the algorithm is theta n. And again, why am I calling this theta n? That's because I can prove 2n plus 2 is big O of n. Also, I can prove 2n plus 2 is big omega of n. So because of that, I can say this is theta of n. So we, can, we call this the worst case time complexity right here, theta n, in this situation. That's because what is the worst case in here? The worst case would be you have to find the element x within this array. If that element x, the one you are searching for, is at the very end of the array, that means you have to go through a1, a2, a3, a4, all the way to an. That's the worst case whenever you have your x at the very end. So your loop will iterate until the end. So that's why we are calling this the worst case. So if the x was at the first, then that would be the best case. If the x was in the middle, exact middle, that would be the average case. So in the next slide, we're going to look at the worst case and the average case in more detail.